Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for part four of the Monday Q&A. So let's do it. Best exercises to strengthen a weak triceps, especially the long head. Well, just overall strength, close grip bench press dips are hard to beat. Now, if you want to particularly focus on the long head, which is the one back here, keep in mind the function of it. Uh, obviously, all three heads get used in anything, but just the elbow extension itself, or elbow flexion, I mean, I'm sorry, it is elbow extension. Ugh, I can't think. Is primarily going to be the lateral and the medial head, and the long head gets used, it's just not it completely its primary function. Its function is more involved with extension of the shoulder joints and pulling the shoulder back. So anything that puts a stretch back here, whether it's skull crushers, which I've done in my skull crusher demonstration videos to where I have you do shoulder extension to include the long head or anything behind the head because it's got that stretch position on it is going to put more emphasis on the long head. So if you really need to strengthen that, any sort of tricep work that works uh, overhead is going to be a good choice. And to some extent that can include overhead pressing. All right, next question. Squatting high bar and low bar in the same week. I squat four times per week, once front and the rest back. Any problem with a low bar day and two high bar days? Should I just choose one? Is training mostly high bar good if I want to use low bar in competition? If you're gonna squat low bar in competition, I don't have an issue with you doing mostly high bar in the off season, but as you get closer to meet, you're gonna to want to rotate in more low bar. You can do what you're doing in the off season just for general strength. I think the low bar is better for overall athletic performance. I know a lot of coaches who agree that'll piss some people off, including ripple toe, but it is what it is. It's my opinion. But if you are competing low bar, you will eventually want to rotate in more low bar days. In fact, you could run exclusively high bar at certain points in your off season. You could run your front squat one day, high bar three, and then start working in low bar days as you get closer to your meet to the point to where your final meet prep, you're doing the nothing but low bar four days a week and even cutting the front squat out because specificity of training. Like even for me in this last meet, that's really the only change I made to my training was that I, I started doing more singles and I worked in nothing but the competition lifts. I started dropping accessories in the final weeks as I got closer to the point where like the last two weeks I was doing nothing but squat, bench, and deadlift and a little bit of overhead pressing. So work it that way. You could rotate it however you want just as you get closer to meet. It's about specificity of training. You're going to want to do more and more of your work sets and your volume with the actual competition version of the lift that you're going to use, even if that means dropping the front squat and everything out for it. So it's the, down to personal choice and preference of what you want to do. It's perfectly fine though. Alright, next question. Can you elaborate on preservation of lean body mass for individuals who are trying to build an above average strength base but also participate in endurance events? Preservation, you, you should be making gains. Contrary to a lot of the dogma out there, and again, if you guys look at Alex Viata, who I've interviewed, I've linked his site in the past, he's shown that it is very much possible to gain muscle to gain strength while competing as an endurance athlete in marathons, super marathons, triathlons, that it can be done. It's all about smart programming. So no, your goal shouldn't be, can I preserve lean body mass? It's like, no, can I gain some lean body mass? Can I gain some strength while I'm training to run marathons? It, it can be done. You just got to program it correctly. Now, what he does, of course, to get around that, ideally, that's why he likes non-linear periodization like conjugate type systems or concurrent training because it allows him to train himself and his athletes around the recovery blocks from that so that their higher intensity cardio can be done immediately after higher intensity lifting days and then while they're recovering from that they're using a different energy system so that they're doing after all their higher volume lighter training they're immediately doing you know their extreme endurance training so that the, the recovery is undulating accordingly to keep it uh, mixed in with the same or similar energy systems between the training days. So you can program uh, appropriately, particularly if you look into Alex Viata's stuff, 
I mean, you can program for both and still actually, believe it or not, increase your endurance while you're gaining muscle and strength. You just have to be smarter about, about it and you can't use bullshit programming and silly nonsense in your training or you're going to fail. You train smart, you can get all of it. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time in part five.